and today I want to talk to you about TV and movie related arcade games. In this video we're going to be using my Sega Blast City Candy Cab. Uh, again, uh, Jammer Standard and as I showed in episode 5, um, this one also has uh, a J-Pack adapter in there and I'm running a lot of these games via a PC uh, using Groovy Main. I'll be showing you a variety of video games that I've discovered over the years. Uh, some good, some not so good and highlighting some of the good and bad points about some of these games. Okay, so let's start. First up I want to talk about Aliens by Konami from 1990. Actually, this is a very good translation from the movie. Uh, lots of fun, two player action, lots of uh, various weapons and so on. Let's give it a go. <laughs> choices with the uh, artwork in this game. Uh, with his hair is, uh, uh, is yellow. I'm not entirely sure why that is. And also as well the aliens are, are purple. designs in this game. This is one of my favourite bosses, uh, very Geiger-esque and uh, very original I think. Uh, this bit here was very impressive back in the day. Uh, I, I remember when I first saw it, I thought it was really, really cool. Reminiscent of uh, Alien 1, travelling through the air ducts uh, and using the scanner. And this was a wow scene back in the day when you could actually get into this vehicle. One of my favourite stages, in fact, uh, the elevator. Um, this is really cool because you've got enemies all around uh, and it gets pretty hectic later on. Considering uh, the game was made in 1990, I think the game holds up very well. 
I really do like the, uh, the level design in this game, it's absolutely amazing. I really do think that it captures both the uh, style and atmosphere of the uh, movie. Now I want to draw your attention to Robocop by Data East. Uh, this game was released in 1988 uh, and um, I really enjoy it. Um, so um, yeah, let's give it a go. Serve the public trust, protect the innocent, uphold the law. Yeah, I love this game, I think it's brilliant. Um, the graphics might not look, not look like much these days, but I still think uh, it plays so well. I love all the sound effects from the movie. I also have Robocop 2 in my collection. Great game, bad movie. I also love some of the other stages in this game, like the junkyard and the drugs factory. And here comes Ed to one of my favourite baddies, both from the movie and the arcade games. And this is one of the cool mini sub games in Robocop, the shooting gallery. Uh, it's just really frantic. Uh, I really like it. Now here is Inner Jones and the Temple of Doom, uh, released by Lucasfilm. Uh, this game dates from 1985. Uh, interesting story about this, in fact, uh, the character in this game was later reused uh, in a home computer version of um, uh, a point and click adventure, the Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, uh, and I think also the Fate of Atlantis. But originally this character uh, from those games was designed for this game here. Uh, it's not bad, I like it, it's kind of cool. Let's try that. This game may look simple, but it's got some uh, very, very, very tetchy collision detection, so it's actually quite tricky to play, and uh, you've got to be really careful about these platforms, otherwise you just fall off. Just like that. The AI for the uh, enemy, uh, or the enemies in this game, uh, is a little bit crazy. Um, they just seem to kill themselves. I particularly love this stage, this is the minecart chase. Yeah, this is pretty fun, it's probably a bit too fast to actually control. Maybe I'm just rubbish. Uh, but I do love the sample at the end when Indy stops and says, We walk from here. I do love the Atari System 1 uh, sample audio, it's just totally Atari. Oh. 
show you um, The Simpsons. Uh, this game came out uh, from Konami in 1991, uh, uh, probably at the peak of The Simpsons uh, fame. Uh, and uh, still a great game, it still holds up today. So let's give it a go. Now this Konami beat-em-up is a lot of fun, uh, particularly in full player as it was originally designed to be. There's some great stages in this game, The Simpsons, from Krusty's theme park uh, to the Halloween uh, Simpsons special, uh, and all of the Simpsons family are in this game. Lost time. I love this mini game. Uh, just you gotta smack the buttons as fast as you can to blow the balloons. Ready? Okay, now we've got Batman, uh, made by Atari. Uh, this game came out in 1989. Uh, and this is based on Tim Burton's Batman uh, from the same time. Um, very odd game, this. Uh, I kind of like it, but it's um, it's got very dark graphics. Uh, Batman looks a bit weird. Uh, but it's got a lot of uh, sounds and samples from the uh, film. Um, so um, let's take a look and, and let's try it out.
Yeah, this game here has got some strange game mechanics. Uh, he feels very, very clunky uh, when you move him around. I do like the graphics, though. One of my favourite samples coming up. Who are you? I'm Batman. Mini games in Batman, obviously in the Bat Car, and later on in the game, there's also a chance to play the Bat Wing as well. Uh, they're bizarre little mini games, these. I don't really get uh, the section, and it seems to be hard to know what you're actually supposed to be doing. But I kind of think it's cool anyway. Yeah, One of my favourite bits from the film, the Axis Chemical Factory, and this is a chance to meet Jack Napier. And I'm going to drop him in the dunk tank. your attention to Konami's Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles or Ninja Turtles depending on which country you're in. Uh, this game was released in uh, 1989 uh, and was extremely popular. I remember it when it came out. Uh, always had a lot of people around the machine. It was very popular. Always seemed a bit the fair and things like that. Um, so yeah, let's give it a go. And it's still good to this day. Again, another Konami classic, just like The Simpsons. Again, in full player, this was amazing. Uh, a lot of fun with your friends. Again, some great stages in this game, and again, some top bosses, Shredder, everybody's there. It's a real blast. Let's talk about Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. And for those who don't know, Michael Jackson actually produced a, a mini film called uh, Moonwalker with Joe Pesci. Uh, quite a bizarre film where he turns into a flying car, a robot. Uh, you'll need to you'll need to check it out yourself. But this is the video game. Uh, this was released by Sega uh, in uh, 1990, um, and it was uh, actually advised uh, on the gameplay by Michael Jackson himself. Uh, we'll give it a go. It's it's interesting. I mean, one of the power ups is that you actually uh, dance with the baddies, uh, as you'll see here. Uh, and also as well, you can play two player, and there will be two Michael Jacksons on 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 the screen. 
Hey, uh, let's give it a go. Now this game makes as much sense as the movie did, and that's not much. Now this game is worth playing just for the cutscenes alone, uh, they are just laugh out loud. Now we come to one of the highlights of the game, the Dance Off Smart Bomb, only in this game. Now I'd like to talk to you about Fixit Felix Jr, which in fact is a game made from a film that was inspired by an arcade game. This in fact is a fake arcade game made for the promotion of Wreck-It Ralph the movie from Disney. Uh, this was in fact made for the promotion of the film in the US. The data was leaked and I managed to get a hold of a copy so I put it on my machine. Let's give it a go. Now this game plays pretty well, uh, the mechanics are very good, uh, in fact it's actually the set of this game is actually a lot harder than it looks and uh, you can easily get killed like I just did there. The payoff in this game though is the end screen, it's just so brilliant and I could just watch it over and over again. Well that's 
I've got time for on this particular episode of Gaming Garage. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, presentation there. And I'll be back again with some more videos soon. I'll see you then.